These Cray T3E machines were the direct descendant of the T3D. They took massively parallel processing and made it standalone. You no longer needed to purchase a C90 or a YMP to host them as they had the IO and uh, subsystems built into the machine using the same technology as the T3E. They were available in two formats. We have here the liquid cooled machine. Um, and over here with these slats at the bottom, this was an air cooled machine. Uh, in liquid cooled machine, the modules were horizontal and had piped cooling into the front of each module. In the air cooled machine, they had vertically mounted machines and forced air cooling. So if we have a look at the side of this machine, the T3E liquid cooled version, you can see these power supply bricks were individually supplied with coolant um, and control wires to maintain the machine. And then round at the front, we have the actual T3E modules, uh, again with their coolant pipes uh, coming to the front edge. Each one of these modules had about eight processors uh, and they were DEC alpha processors. That was a change for Cray using somebody else's microprocessor, but the quantity of engineering to join up those processors and make the system work as a whole was not inconsiderable. The Cray T3E range set the standard for supercomputing rolling out of the end of the last century and into the new century. The T3E range of machines uh, was at the top of the 500 supercomputers for way longer than any other machine, primarily because you could add to it. You could add cabinets with extra CPUs and you could build out to, um, build out to much larger systems. And also, the core processor chip uh, evolved through a couple of generations to be a faster individual CPU. The network interconnect is by a 3D torus of wires, so everybody talked to their neighbor in uh, X, Y, and Z directions. 